What's up YouTube? Back with your boy Luke. Hey guys, check this out. Today's video is going to be a great one. We're going to be talking about the red light district in Bogota, Colombia, which is also known as the Santa Fe. Okay guys, let me tell you something real quick. This video is for educational purposes only. I'm not promoting any business down there. I'm simply reporting on a Santa Fe district, which is the red light district of Bogota, Colombia. It is completely legal red light district much like the red light district in Amsterdam or in Zona Norte, Tijuana, or in Thailand. I went down there on a fact-finding mission, guys, and I found all the facts, and I'm going to give them to you right here. There are a lot of videos on YouTube of guys walking around, some hidden camera work, guys walking up and down the street, videotaping the girls, videotaping the bars. You're not going to find that on my channel. What you are going to find is the facts. So let's jump right into it. Okay, guys. When you get to the Santa Fe in Bogota, there's basically three types of girls working there, okay? Much like Zona Norte of Tijuana, if you've ever been there. Now, the three types of girls are you're going to have the street girls, you're going to have the bar girls, and you're going to have the massage parlors. I can tell you right now, the Santa Fe District of Colombia is way better than Zona Norte of Tijuana, okay? If you're kind of debating on where to go, you need to understand something. Colombia is the major leagues. Tijuana is the minor leagues. Now, before I get into details about Columbia, let me tell you this. If you live on the West Coast, LA, Washington, Oregon, Vegas, Phoenix, in that case, you need to go ahead and go to Tijuana because it's so much easier to fly into San Diego and walk across the border than it is to go to Columbia. But guys, if you're on the East Coast or you're looking at like Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, I know Houston's not on the East Coast, but it's only a four and a half hour flight to Bogota. Or if you're in Florida, in that case, you need to go ahead and fly down to Columbia. Guys, here's the thing. The street girls in Columbia are everywhere, okay, in the Santa Fe district. They're lined up and down the street. And these girls are, you know, asking anywhere from 40, 50, 60,000 Colombian pesos, which is like 10, 15 bucks, okay? They're about half the price of the street girls in Tijuana, all right? You're going to find everything here. You're going to find... Girls that are 20, 25, you're going to find girls that are 40, 45. Skinny girls, tall girls, fat girls, ugly girls, pretty girls. Everything you can imagine right there on the street. All right, guys. Now, let me tell you about the clubs. Um, I visited the Paisa Club. I visited the Troya Club. And I visited a few other clubs in the Santa Fe area. So when I compare those clubs to like the clubs in Zona Norte of Tijuana, such as Adelita's or the Hong Kong Club, let me tell you, the inside of these clubs is not as nice, okay? But there's way more girls, and there's way more girl-to-guy ratio, okay? You're gonna, when you walk in these clubs, it's nothing to have 50 or 60 girls in there, packed, wall-to-wall, -wall, okay? Now, there are a lot of pretty girls, there are a lot of average girls, and there are a lot of ugly girls, okay? But in general, there's something for everybody, okay? There's a ton of girls and the selection is way better in these bars than it is in Tijuana, Mexico, okay? That's why I say Colombia's the big leagues. More girls and cheaper prices. Even the bar girls, guys, they're cheap, okay? The bar girls are about half the price of the girls in Tijuana. So, you know, we're like girls in Tijuana, you know, they're asking for 80, 90 bucks. A lot of these girls in Colombia, they're usually always asking for Colombian pesos. They vary, you don't want to spend dollars there because you're going to get screwed on the exchange rate and some of the places will not take dollars at all, okay? Unlike Tijuana, where these places will take dollars, here in Colombia, it's better for you to do the exchange rate and pay in Colombian pesos. But hey guys, a girl that's top notch at the Hong Kong club that's 80 or 90 bucks, you're going to get that in Colombia for 40 or 50 dollars all day long. Now the hotel that I recommend staying at, it all kind of depends on you, but I've stayed at the Takendama Hotel a couple different times. You can find it on Priceline. Uh, it's gonna be about 45 bucks a night, and it's only about three or four blocks from the main zone, okay? And it's safe, the cab drivers are good. They have a Casa de Cambio there where you can change your US dollars for Colombian pesos. And the hotel is also girl friendly. So if you meet a girl, in the Santa Fe and you want to take her back to the hotel, you're absolutely welcome to do that. Okay, guys, let me talk about the third type of joint that you got going on here. Much like Mexico, you got the massage parlors going on, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to find the best quality girls at these massage parlors. 
And to me, the best overall experience is going to be at these places. They're clean. They have girls. They have open bar. They have weight rooms. Like, who would go there to lift weights? But they have them. They have saunas. They have whirlpools. They have jacuzzis. You know, in this case right here, you're going to be on the upper end of the money that you're going to spend. So you're going to spend probably anywhere from, you know, $60 to $100 right there. And I guarantee you, you're going to be happy with everything there. You're going to be happy with the girl, the facility, everything, okay? It's a lot of fun. Now, guys, keep in mind right now, it's August 1st, 2021. You do have a mandatory COVID test to come back into the United States by airplane. Now, I'm going to do a separate video of this, but I'm going to tell you right now, Columbia has got it set up real easy. As soon as you fly into the Dorado Airport in Columbia, they have right there at the airport, as soon as you walk out to where all the taxis are, huge white building, it's called Sin Lab, and it says COVID test. You can go in there, you can talk to some nurses, they speak English, they speak Spanish, their paperwork is in English, their paperwork is in Spanish, they will totally take care of you. They take cards and they take Colombian pesos, okay? There's also a Casa de Cambio right there, you can change your American money for Colombian money. And they'll give you this COVID test and you'll have your results emailed to you within 48 hours, okay? Or 24 hours, I think it is. So you can take care of that right there. It runs about 80 bucks. I have a separate video of that coming out that's gonna show everything from the whole process to the inside of the place and everything. So guys, other than that, that pretty much covers the basis about Colombia. I will say this. The drinking situation with the girls is a little bit different in Colombia than it is in Mexico. See, when you're in Mexico and you buy a girl a drink, they charge you about three times the normal price of the drink. Well, they don't do that in Colombia. But the problem is in Colombia, if you want a mixed drink like a Bacardi and Coke, or maybe you want a screwdriver or a white Russian, they won't really sell you that in Colombia. They wanna sell you the whole bottle. You can buy beer one by one by one by one. But if you wanna buy a mixed drink, they make you buy the whole bottle. And you know, that kinda of just kills the experience for me. Um, I'm not gonna go in any place and drop 80, 90, 100, 150 bucks on a bottle of Bacardi that I can buy at the liquor store for 15 bucks. So right then and there, when I found out that, I'm kinda of done with the situation, okay? Now, other people might not be that way, but that's just me. Hey guys, if you hadn't done it already, Go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button. Any questions you have about Zona Norte, the red light district of Tijuana, hit me up. Any questions you have about Colombia, hit me up, guys. I'd be happy to help you out. I will say this, in the Santa Fe district of Bogota, Colombia, I did not feel as safe there as I do in Tijuana, but I've lived in Tijuana for 20 years, okay? And I've been walking around Tijuana forever. Nothing's ever happened to me. Now, Bogota was great because I went with a cab driver and he was super cheap and he got out and he went to these clubs with me. He went in these clubs with me and everybody seemed to know him, but it's just more intense, okay? You're gonna find less people that speak English. When you walk out of clubs in Tijuana, you might hear a guy saying, hey buddy, come over here, check out the massage parlor. Hey buddy, it's two for one beer, right? Not in Colombia, man. In Colombia, when you walk out of the bar, they swarm you, right? They're like, come here, come here, come here. They're almost like pushing you into their bar, okay? So it is a little bit more intense, and um, I definitely would recommend not going alone at night, especially if it's your first time. Go with a cab driver, okay? Pay the guy, stay at the Taken Dama Hotel. Those cabs say Taken Dama on the side. Those guys are there every night. This is what they do. Go ahead and pay that guy 30 bucks to come with you, stay with you, and make sure you're taken care of and nothing happens to you. Now, it might be a completely safe place. I don't know. I just felt that it was a little bit more intense than Tijuana, okay? So it would be my recommendation to you, if you're a first time goer, to go and do how I told you how to do it. Make sure you got somebody with you covering your back. Guys, once again, thanks for watching. Smash that like and subscribe button. We'll see you down the road.